But watching it and also discussing it with Fincher, as a woman, I thought it was a real keyhole glimpse into what it means to men and the need to fight. And not so much to inflict violence, but to take it. And it isn't so specifically about violence for violence's sake, but it's more to do with the sensation of feeling alive. I mean, it's a desperate statement to say about society that people have become so benumbed and so dead spiritually and emotionally that they have to hit themselves in order to feel free in the moment. It's the same sort of psychology as any kind of addiction or any kind of self-destructiveness that people need to inflict pain on themselves to try and obliterate the other kind of psychological pain they might be suffering from. I said to Fincher when um, the first time I read the book, uh, I called him and I just said, you know, if we get this right or if we get the tone of this right, it, it'll be like the graduate, you know, which it seems like a strange comparison because obviously none of the specifics are similar at all um, in terms of the context. But, you know, if all stories are the same in the end or if, or if there's really only a few core stories, I think this is kind of just like the graduate. It's the story of youthful dislocation and of the feeling of, sort of entering the adult world and feeling out of sync with the value system that you're expected to engage in and trying to figure out the answer to the question of how to be happy. And I think The Graduate, you know, is very much about a guy who obviously is out of sync with the, what he's expected to plug into. The thing I love about The Graduate is that at the end it's so ambiguous. It's no, it's no clear-cut victory or it's, it's not, you know, they're smiling, heading off on a bus together, and you know they're going to be happy forever. It's more just that there's sort of a feeling, I'm not quite sure what I've done here, but I think I've at least taken a step in the right direction. And I mean, Fincher and Bradley used to talk about a lot. The, um, so, you know, it's a story about a person finding a path to maturity or going on a journey of figuring out how to be mature. And in a similar way, this is, it, it's not it's not quite the same complaint, but I think it's very, this fight club is very much a story about a guy feeling disconnected and uh, numb in the face of the value systems who, through Tyler, like Mrs. Robinson, goes off and, you know, and, and basically explores the his more nihilistic impulses, his, his impulses toward just saying, fuck you, the whole thing. <laughs> same thing in a revival, that energy that takes over, and uh, people say that's God, you know, but it's the energy of the mob. And I love how I was always in the background, out of focus, like the little devil on the shoulder, the little voice in your head. It's fun actually to, once you watch the movie and you know what the real underlying reality is. Jack and Tyler, uh, it's fun to watch it and think about the whole thing from one perspective. Most people I know, even the ones who loved it the first time, have said that they really liked it more the second time, that they got much, much more out of it the second time. Because it's just sad and unfortunate. insurance before doing a film and at the end of my interview I said well how many Xanax okay. do you need to take in order to kill yourself and I'm going to forget the burpees then I explained of course it was for, for a while alright here I was supposed to be back there doing some kind of sit up or something hey. I don't know how the martial arts hey, thing worked in but this was the first moment I just asked if anyone knew nunchucks I had any nunchuck moves and one guy showed us a little move and doing absolutely nothing that makes any sense <laughs> The difference it looks like someone know what I'm doing. I love them falling into frame, showing I was a little into frame where I was playing. Tomorrow was playful, so it didn't seem like even though she's you know, the kind of fashionable nihilist. 
This is a shot. <clears throat> Those aren't my breasts, I hate to add. I wish they were. Um, but this is a computer generated shot. Mm-hmm. I 
that moment for you. That's three times you promised. I love you, but I cut a little patch on stuff. But yeah, yeah that schoolboy stuff that I don't know. There you go. Promise. Promise. Originally, the book is this whole thing about um, Chitayan Joe's um, gallbladder. Um, it was it was based on this Reader's Digest series that was it was real. Yeah, it was yeah, real. my parents remember. And then, Thank you. 
to me. It's like this year to me was this exciting year in terms of all kinds of stuff that was happening in film as any year in a long time. And we just had these guys just ranting and raving about their own obsolescence, really. And you could literally walk all the way around the set. So you walk and looking for one exit coming through across the middle of the very quietly not to mess up the sound. Coming back down on the other side of the bus. I love this. It's all one thing. It's pretty mm -hmm. masterfully designed in this Thank you very much. Oh no, I designed it. Oh, right. <laughs>
Brandon? Thanks, it's one of my father's favorite scenes. Really? Yeah. Your father's probably He's a groundbreaker. Well, he's only 37. Yeah, she had to. Oh, no, I... Yeah, she had to. Oh, yeah. Whoa. <sighs> Come on, give me a little bit of time. Hi. That's truly amazing. Sure, you know, I'll take a break. Many actors do hey, that. That and the smoke ring that comes out of your what? mouth at the what? end when you're it's sitting. That like, smell for a smoke yeah. ring I've ever done in my life. Yeah, yeah. It's amazing. Hey, I got a duck. <sighs> God knows my life this woman. The woman who oh, oh. this week kept trying to think of moving her in position because she had the same pass at the same speed. We always wanted to make her, we wanted to make sure that she was in the <laughs> When we did this, this was on the first week of shooting. Oh, well, the actor, you reshot this one, though, didn't you? We did, yeah. Well, we reshot and then we threw out the reshoot. Exactly. We did it, and it was, it was Wednesday. Because we spent that Thursday and Friday entirely shooting and beating myself up in front of him. Oh, yeah. And we shot this and like, you know, we did it, we did it, we did it. And now, kept telling me different things, different notes, different notes. And I was trying to get lost. I was trying to, you know, and it was the first week. I had this perception that you were going, oh, fuck, you know, like, it's, it's not going well or something, you know what I mean? Like, or they don't, what it was like, I felt it was the first, it was like the first week and, uh, you know, just, you could hear, everybody's getting in the groove, you know. Remember the thing that happened. The thing that happened after we did the reshoot, which I like a lot better because it's really cool and really, really deadly, was that Columbine happened. And the thing that happened happened the next day with the reshoot, which was much more dangerous, much more evil. Um, also, just wasn't the same. I mean, if we had an air on the side, if we were trying to make it a while, right? Which you know, we were able to do that. Yeah, 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 we were able to do that. So we went back to the original one, which is a much more new one. Even within oh, yeah. the context of the films that came out this year, it surprised me that 
Hey. What's that? Seriously? Well, I think the title Raging Bull has as many yeah. explicit, you know, shots of faces beaten up by fists. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, it's not yeah, any. Yeah. It's yeah. It was one of the good movies. That helps. Good boy. You might me. I'm saying the same about this. I'm just saying, I mean, Braveheart, Braveheart has incredible gore in it. You know what I mean? Far way more than this. Yeah, but they ripped out his initials at the end, so it made everything happen. Can you can't even find that skinny man. Wow. I love that movie. I didn't say that. I don't even like that. I'm not picking on any movie. I'm, I'm comparing and contrasting other good films that had much, much more violence. Yeah, this movie has a lot of violence. Yeah, yeah. Nobody raised no, the no, 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 I don't even think that's in here. I don't think the truth is the film is it attacks a way of life. It, it attacks nice. the status quo uh, that men have, have given 40 years to, and, and you know they can't roll over now. They can't roll over now. But it's also you know it's actually the fact is that depends on the you know where the yeah. climate of the yeah where masculinity is. But well, I think Brad's right though. I think it's also the fact that it was <laughs> without. Showing any violence, just saying certain things that have kind of cultural violence in them. This is a This is sort of central manifesto of Tyler's vision. And it really describes the way it's not just the male, but it's not just the
We get ourselves in trouble though, don't we, with the guy in the back holding us up. You wanted to cut this? No, 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 it was cut down. It was trimmed a little bit. Getting close. There was more that we got out of him, like light bulbs and towels, but we just we always had that question behind us of the, of the thug with the gun, so. I just thought Luke capitulated uh, a little early. Well, you know what? Uh, he actually does. He scary. actually got tons of laughs. So he, he pretty much blew the tongue. Yeah. You know, Good blood down his throat. Yeah. Oh, yeah. uh, 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 he was pretty brave. Interference. Yeah, he was in his mouth. It was amazing. I mean, the snottiest, most viscous, like, fluids came out of Brad's hey. mouth and nose and ears and just dribbled into, onto, splattered onto his teeth. And we could see. And we chopped him <sighs> 18 to <years. laughs> It was nice. Well, I think I'm about so done. I love this. Like I finally was to go until I got to like <laughs> fatigued on the pull-up, <laughs> and I'm totally like almost tapped out on the pull-up, so I'm just gonna call it. I love the shoe. Would you? Looks like I've been yeah, going for like both these guys 40 minutes or so. That's so. Matt Winston. Not the right here at the time. You're on the second, yeah, the second spray. Hey, hey, man. I'm gonna call it Jerry. Come on. You can see Come the camera starts to bounce there because the camera operators start laughing. Ah. <laughs> Come say bye. Yeah, yeah, we're we're right. Right. Hey, that's the Bible! Come here. Hey. Hey. This is in this dust as well. Um, uh, you can actually you found this, this music. He's got some, uh, no, no, yeah, it was, it was like a, it was like a Jewish He picked up some pine needles with his toy here. Jewish folk music version of the Andrews sisters, and they did this whole thing. You couldn't get the rights to it because yeah. no one could find who had the estate because yeah. they've been dead for yeah. years and years. And so we had the Dust Brothers actually re recorded that stuff. It's a rubber rock, brings in some debris. Good game, everybody. I'm Jack's complete last See you later.